I'm Haley Taylor, and you're listening to The Rough Draft Diaries. This week on The Rough Draft Diaries, we're talking to someone who you may see represented in the community more than you think. My name is Stacy Jurich, and I'm the owner of Bucci Mama's Kombucha. Bucci Mama is a fermented drink that's offered in restaurants, local grocery stores, and art festivals throughout Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan. Now, the first thing we should clear up is probably what is kombucha? So kombucha is a fermented tea. It's actually a centuries-old beverage. Yeah, it's a fermented tea that's primarily known for its probiotic health benefits. And because of the fermentation, um, there's a little bit of sourness, but a little bit of sweetness. So it's kind of got a a unique taste, and it's carbonated, um, so it's super refreshing. Kombucha has been a trendy drink over the past few years. It's been sold as a commercial beverage since the late 1970s, so it's still pretty new, with many people jumping on or off the probiotic trend. What I'm dreading about kombucha is um, if one of those pieces of bacteria touches my Christian lips, I'm going to have a panic attack. (laughs) That's Brittany Broski, who went viral on YouTube over her wild reviews of various kombucha brands. She was later converted into a fan. But what she mentions is actually important to the kombucha process. It's called the SCOBY. To do the fermenting in kombucha, we have a living yeast that comes in the form of like a cellulose mat, um, and it's actually called a SCOBY. It's a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, S-C-O-B-Y, and it's like a gelatinous mat, and its job is to convert the sugars in the tea into acetic acids, which make it kombucha, and that gives it the sourness as well as the probiotics. Stacy started making kombucha just in her home. She then slowly started selling it to friends and then friends of friends, and then all of a sudden got the idea to turn this into a full-blown business. I realized after doing some traveling that a lot of cities had their own local or regional kombucha company that had not quite come about in the Midwest yet. It was mostly like an East Coast or West Coast thing. So I kind of saw that, you know, it might be something that in a few years Toledo would come around to. And I thought that I, I could fill that niche. And it it has been a little bit of a learning curve being that it's, you know, a little bit more of a niche drink, but I think that more and more people are catching on to to the health benefits and looking for low-sugar alternatives. Although people are, again, jumping on the bandwagon for, as Stacy mentioned, probiotic, sugar-free drinks, she still encounters obstacles along the way to being a young business owner here in Toledo. I think that I, while I have more of a network here locally, there's also been more of the old boys network like kind of challenges I faced here where because I'm making a consumable like a drink that a lot of people are unfamiliar with I kind of am like put into a category of like a little girl at a lemonade stand or someone that a a cookie bake sale where it's like you're kind of tapped on the head and say oh that's cute and so that that's been an obstacle from the get-go I mean I think I'd like to think that well, I know that it hasn't changed because even even just this year, even though we've, I've been in business eight years, you know, you, you still kind of have to almost like prove yourself to people. And it's it's very exhausting. Um, but I think almost at, you know, outside of Toledo or even at a, on a larger scale in bigger cities or, or whatever, it's maybe more common to see women in business. I don't know if that's true or if, if or not, but um, I guess that's kind of been my experience, at least locally, where it's yeah, definitely, definitely having to work to to prove yourself. But there's a wonderful group of you know other like female entrepreneurs that I get to collaborate with and work with and uplift each other, and that's been hugely important. Toledo is the underlying factor in Bucci Mama's production. It's the space where Stacy felt the most connected and the most inspired to create her brand, even in giving advice to other new business owners. She mentions the city and the positives of living in a small, connected community. The best advice I would say is find find some people in your community that um, you can collaborate with, whether it's as partners in the endeavor or maybe just as support, or maybe you share 
a production space or office space. I think using the resources of our community and using the whatever network each person has、um, is a good way to kind of test the waters and see if you have something viable, and also to be able to do it in a way that is resourceful and economical, so you're not, you know, getting yourself in the hole too much from the get-go. I, I went the more of an organic growth route, and I think that just maintaining that. Originality of the city is really important as Toledo becomes bigger and bigger and kind of gets more on the map. It's important to kind of uplift the businesses and artists that make Toledo unique and special. I'm Haley Taylor, and thanks for listening to this episode of the Rough Draft Diaries. 